electric field. So we have three goals for this session. We're going to introduce the idea of the electric field. We'll connect electric field to what we've done previously with gravity. And we'll also have a quick look at diagrams showing electric field lines or electric field vectors. Those are ways we visualize the electric field. So we'll start by uh, looking at this problem with three charges in a line. So what we know here is that uh, ball one has an unknown charge in sign. Ball two is positive with a charge of Q plus Q. And ball three is an un unknown non-zero charge and sign. Q1 is 2R to the left of Q2, Q3 is R to the right of Q2. So our goal here is to say something about uh, ball number one. So ball three we know is in equilibrium. It feels no net electric static force due to the other two balls. So what is the sign of the charge on ball one? Positive? Negative? We can't tell unless we know the sign of the charge on ball three. So just think about that question and then we'll start addressing it. So here we draw the free body diagram of charge number three. It's got two forces, one to the left, one to the right. One is coming from Q2, the other one's coming from Q1. Now ball three is in equilibrium because it experiences equal and opposite forces. Therefore ball one must have a negative charge. If you flip the sign of the charge on ball three, then it reverses both forces, but they still cancel. So what about the magnitude of the charge on ball one? Can we even tell if we don't know what Q3 is? Well, it turns out that we can. For these two forces to be equal and opposite, then we have ball one three times as far away from ball three as ball two is, and the distance is squared in the force equation. So the charge on ball one must have a magnitude of 9q. So let's just go over that mathematically. We'll define right as positive. We'll say the net force on ball number three is zero, and that comes from the force that one applies to three and the force that two applies to three. Okay, so we'll say uh, ball number one applies a force which goes as one over three r squared. It's k, q3, magnitude of Q1 with a minus sign here. And the other guy applies a force of KQ, Q3 over R squared. Okay. So if you figure it out, then you say, well, the magnitude of Q1 over 9 must be Q, the same as the charge on Q2, and therefore Q1 has a magnitude of 9Q. And of course, we've already established that Q1 is a negative charge. Okay, so it's minus 9Q. And the neat thing here is that we don't need to know a thing about ball 3 except that ball 3 was, is at equilibrium. So we can put whatever charge we like at the location of ball 3 and it still feels no net force because of balls 1 and 2. Well that means that ball 3 isn't special at all, it's the location that ball 3 is at that's special. So we'll get rid of ball 3 from our picture as we've done above and think about how the two charged balls influence the point where ball 3 was. Okay, so now we're talking about the electric field. So ball 2's effect on ball 3 when it was there is given by Coulomb's law. F23, KQ, Q3 over R squared. Ball 2's effect on the point where ball 3 was is given by the electric field that ball 2 produces. And the field from a point charge goes as KQ over R squared. In contrast, the field from ball 1 is minus 9KQ over 3R squared which works out to minus kq over r squared. And so these two fields are equal and opposite at that place where ball 3 was, so they cancel. Okay, so what is a field anyway? Well, it's something that has a magnitude and a direction at every point in space. A good example is the gravitational field, and our symbol for that is little g, and the electric field, capital E, plays a similar role for charges that G does for objects that have mass. And of course G has a dual role because it also turns out to be the acceleration due to gravity. So if gravity is the only thing acting on an object, then we have uh, the gravitational force, which is mg, is ma, and so the m's cancel out and a equals g. Now, it's not quite as simple when you have 
a charged object acted upon by an electric field only. So in that case, the acceleration is given by, so now you've got the electric force is Q times the electric field. That's similar to M times the gravitational field. That's equal to MA. But of course, now we don't have an M on both sides of the equation, so we don't have anything that cancels. So here the acceleration is QE over M. Okay, so how do we visualize electric fields? Well, sometimes we use field lines. And this gives a qualitative view of the magnitude of the field at various points. and also shows us what direction the field is going in. So the field is strongest where the lines are close together. So picture A, it shows a uniform electric field directed down. The lines are all equally spaced. B shows the field near a negative point charge. Field lines are pointing in toward the negative charge. And C is what we call an electric dipole. So the red one is positive, the blue one is negative, and so you see field lines, electric field lines, are starting on the positive charge, and they will end on the negative charge. An alternative to this is what we call electric field vectors, and this reinforces the idea that there's an electric field everywhere in space, and in this case the field is strongest where the vectors are darker, so again, A is a uniform electric field directed down. B is the field near a negative point charge. You see the arrows are getting uh, sort of fading away as with distance from the charge. And then you've got C, which is the electric dipole. And so you can see the field is starting on the, electric, on the positive charge and ending on the negative charge. Okay, so uh, if we want to be quantitative, then electric field lines or uh, vectors are not that useful. So here we now use superposition. The net electric field at a particular point is the vector sum of the individual electric fields at that point. And the individual fields come from point charges. Electric field from point charge is kq over r squared. That's the magnitude. Direction-wise, the field points away from a positive charge and toward a negative charge. Okay, so that is it for our introduction to the electric 